Hello, and if you're looking for an episode where I talk to you about some of my summer makes, go into detail about the Tammy Handmade Naya and making a skirt out of a tablecloth, then this is the episode for you. Hello, same friends. I thought I'd sit in a different location today. I think I need to turn like this. A well, I feel like that's better because then you're not getting the shadow on one side. So, <laughs> hope you are well. Thank you for your lovely comments. If you said about seeing me feeling better, it's really nice. And I do feel, I would say probably to back to 95%. There's still that little lingering cough, but I knew when I felt better when I was desperate to make something. And this week I have been back to my full making capacity went away last weekend and it was kind of needed because it meant I came back and was champing at the bit because I've been poorly I was a bit behind on my so fruity plan so I tried to focus on those but um sort of got distracted and really enjoyed playing my, my fabrics after filming the summer plans for you all I got really excited and really rejuvenated so thank you for your comments on that as well let's not start with what I'm wearing because what I'm going to do is go through the things I've made for So Fruity, go through them in detail with you and uh, then at the end I'll show you a little bit of fabric shopping but today we'll just do like a detailed chat about the So Fruity items. You may have already seen the pictures on Instagram but I do like to give you much more detail on here so it's great if you get to see the pics but here you get the deets. <laughs> so let's now start with what I'm wearing. I have a matching cohort and I will put a video slash photos in here. This gorgeous fabric is from Minerva. Now you probably know, so don't massively order from Minerva. Minerva. I did try in the past and I just felt the fabric was a bit hit and miss with quality. I do like that you can return and I did actually return some because I was quite disappointed. Other times I've had amazing fabrics that have been beautiful quality and I've got some lovely clothes I've made from this but they do have some gorgeous prints and every now and again I just can't help myself and this was one of them. So I can't remember, it's got some fruity name theme tropical thing and I think the more you look at it the more sort of you see different things in it. And when I bought it I was quite strict and I think I only bought a metre and a half to make myself make a top or something similar. But actually, having worn my Madras blue skirt the other week when we were travelling, if you haven't seen my episode about my June week in my wardrobe, my me made, it's in there. And I realised how much I liked sort of a pencil skirt style summer skirt with an elastic waistband. So I laid this fabric out and I, because I was going to make a skirt, I mean, as I couldn't make like a sort of a, a more circle skirt style and then I realised I had enough to make a Tammy handmade. So the skirt has got a split at the back but I've done three rows of thin elastic in here with like almost like a mini paper bag at the top and a split at the back. I have a tiny wee amount of bit of fabric left so I might make a patch pocket on the front. I did think about inseams but actually there isn't a seam down the sides the, the only seam is one down the back and the reason I did the seam down the back is so I could do the split then I realized because you need less than a meter of fabric to make the Tammy Handmade Naya I realized that I could get this out of it as well happy days I've had some questions about the Naya and I do not size up when I make a woven I just don't feel that I need to if you'd wanted a bit more room around here then you could or you could just sew a slightly smaller seam allowance that would be a way to do it because then it would just give you that sort of centimetre of uh, if you did like half the seam allowance on the sides here I wouldn't change the shoulder because it'll hang lower but on the sides if you change half the seam allowance on the two sides it would give you about a centimetre overall just a bit extra I haven't done the sleeve cuff on this one, I usually do but I decided not to and I also just folded this one over to hem, I didn't put the neck band on. Some versions I put the neck band on but this is like a viscous linen or something like that and I felt it would be too stiff so I just went for 
uh, I scooped it slightly lower and just folded over. Now I um, finished the edges first on my overlocker and then just folded it over because I really didn't want a stiff protruding neckline and just overlocking in my multicolored thread and folding it over meant that even if it's seen it looks nice. This is quite a fraying type of fabric so I actually overlocked all the edges on the two pieces before I sewed them together as well because sometimes I'll do that afterwards but I knew if I didn't do this before I would have regrets. I'm really happy with this. I'll put pictures, I hopefully pictures are coming in when I'm talking of how I've paired each piece with something else and I just feel I could throw this on like this, stick on a big pair of earrings and just go to work and just feel really sort of like well I'm feeling a bit Margot leg bled better in this pattern I love it it's just great let's talk about another self-drafted skirt so this one you might remember seeing it was a tablecloth I bought months ago in a charity shop for £3.50 I shared this in my summer plans and I shared this in the so fruity planning video as well and how amazing is that that the plans turned into the reality had to do some skillful cutting because there was definitely a tea stain on this so there's four pieces the skirt I based this on was my orangey pink madras skirt and when I laid it on if I'd cut out the full width of the front and the back I'd have ended up going into the tea stains so I actually folded the skirt into in half so I was cutting out quarters so it means I've got at the front, there's a piece that runs to the middle. Can you see the seam down the middle? And then a piece on that side and the same on the back. I then, I couldn't pattern match because obviously I was having to be creative to get around the tea stain. I then did big patch pockets. So I just felt it just gave it that picnic skirt look. I did a similar waistband, but just two rows of elastic in this one. And I'm really glad I made it I'm so glad that I didn't put it off now I haven't yet finished it because I'm thinking about searching through my fabric and making my own bias binding that will work with it so I just wanted a little pause and a think on that I might just over um, overlock it and then turn it up one but I haven't decided yet this is definitely the kind of skirt that I will get wear out of in these what I think of as British summer, which is at 19 to 22 degrees Celsius, so probably like 60s uh, Fahrenheit, 60s to the early 70s, where it's just sunny but a little bit fresh at times and you want to feel nice and summery and swishy and I've already tried this out with like a casual t-shirt little denim jacket I if you would like to see me sort of styling up these things let me know because I could do that for my July one and also now I've talked about the both me made skirts I've self drafted if you'd like me to do a vlog about how I self draft them and make this let me know because you know what I'm like don't buy a pattern if you don't need one and hopefully you can see I didn't need a pattern for these there is another tablecloth skirt brewing I would say right let's talk about the Romy lantern sleeve I thought I was done on the Romy lantern sleeve and I didn't think it would be a full-on summer top because of that lovely long lantern sleeve however I have fallen in love massively and I know some people have already got their way before me but with double gauze and there's some gorgeous designs at the moment and this strawberry one I would like to take back what I said in my So Fruity vlog about not being a novelty print person. I can't believe none of you corrected me on that. I clearly am. So I was on the Fabric Beehive, which I've never ordered from before, excellent customer service and delivery. And I decided to buy myself, which I'll show you at the end, some double gauze, and then saw this one. So I was very strict with myself and only bought a meter washed it now that's something i need to say about double gauze never scrimp on the washing i've been doing a bit of reading about double gauze it really shrinks and i saw that in the difference between when i said it when i hung it uh, when i said it when i washed it and hung it on the line so i was like okay i think a Romy lantern sleeve might be quite nice i've seen this lovely um 
top that Erica Davis was wearing. It was bourgeois anglaise and that was not what I liked. I just liked the shape of it. And so I thought, do you know what? I'm pretty sure I've got some patterns like that. So I scoop the neck out more at the front and I actually shorten this. Now it's quite tricky to do because I had to shorten the sleeve, the top part, and I made a shorter version of the lantern bit as well. I'm pleased it worked out. Again, if you'd like me to do a whole episode about the Romy lantern, I could really go into detail about how I did that as well. Did the cuff. This is just so soft. This is another one. In the pictures here, I've got it on with a pair of denim shorts. I cannot remember ever wearing denim shorts before. I'm just not one of those people. Some people wear them all their life, some people are in love with them. Because I'm not a big jeans person, I've never really found denim shorts that I've liked either. Saw these recommended by lady on Instagram, 40 plus something, 40, oh, I don't know what her name is, but she said they were the best denim shorts. So I was like, okay, let's give them a try. So I ordered them. It's quite rare for me, as you know, to order clothes from sort of high street and actually you can see for yourself they're really nice shape so now i've ordered them i might have a little go at recreating some not start with denim but just do, like make some twirls and things but this is just like you know like if you go sort of coastal and there's a bit of a breeze but you want to feel summery so with this three quarter length sleeve and again just throw it on with a denim jacket i've started out with my red double gauze trousers as well just double gauze heaven. I even feel I'd like to make a top like this in a different colour. as like a pyjama top. It just feels special. Um, I've made this exactly the same size as I made the other ones. I didn't press anything apart from the neck at the end. Because the thing about double gauze is when you start pressing it, you can press out the double gauziness. It, I think it comes back when you wash it, but you've got to be really careful. You can almost see there where it sort of pressed it out a bit. I did need to press that neckline down a little bit. Well, two more to go. Now, I can't remember if I've told you about this one or not. So apologies if I have. I won't labour on it. But this was another one of my sofa Free entries. This is an LB pullover. This is a French terry um, with, I can say tomatoes, with oranges on it. And I did the cuffs in orange and the neckband in the green because I just felt it pulled it all together doing that. And it felt too much in one. And I just did no alterations, cut it out. This is quite a sort of a move in colours from my other stronger colours. And I do wonder if it would become like sort of a... You know when you go like camping or away and you're somewhere where it's a bit cooler in the evening and you want something to throw on? I feel like it might be that. But then again, I've got some trousers to make in teal and things. So once I've made those, maybe this might work. I do like to quite make my jumpers in planes, actually. I feel they go with more, but I will make the joggers to go with this because I've got enough fabric and then I'll have a matching set. Right, my last one. Whoops, glasses on the floor. Last one bit of hacking happened here so you might remember this fabric this by Grisalia I shared it in my summer plans and some lovely comments saying get it made out and I nearly made a dress length version of the Tammy Handmade Naya and then I paused for a minute and I took a minute and I thought about it and suddenly I thought hang on I really loved, and I'll put a picture in here, the Billy t-shirt I made with the poofy sleeve in one of the other by Grisalia, by Graziella, by Grisalia um, fabrics. And I was like, I'd love like a, a t-shirt dress that's a bit more sort of shaped and things. And so I ended up making a Billy jumper t-shirt dress. So I took the Tilly and the Buttons Billy jumper pattern, which only comes to just above the knee and I had already made it before so I'd already sized it down on the shoulders and then graded out so I cut it out and then lengthened it further down because once it got to the hips I kept going down sort of shaped in a little bit as I went down and just did it quite sort of measured how much further down my leg I wanted when I hold, held the pattern up and then did a bit extra for luck 
was quite short on fabric but I wanted quite a short sleeve now the balloon sleeve pattern is huge so I really folded it up a lot because I knew I wanted it short and so I was able to get it out and even then it was still a little bit long but then I did like last time so I added a cuff on it's a little cuff just to bring it in it is the puff sleeve the pictures will be coming in now I'm talking I did again what I've done before with by Gazelle and I used the salvage print for the neckline I think it just makes it more interesting and breaks it up a bit. I, 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 there wasn't enough to do the sleeve like it. I just think it just brings a little something. Now, other hacks that I did. I actually cut the back as two pieces, allowing a little bit extra for seam allowance. Because what I find that I've learned from watching and looking at other patterns is if you do the back in two pieces, it scoops in more if you've got like a sway back or a round bum like me and it doesn't then just sort of go and have the like the sort of spare fabric and it also meant I could shape in a little bit I put it on after I'd done it and clipped where that part of my back is and just shaped in there a bit I turn it inside out to try and show you that so I don't know if you can see but there yes you can actually look there's like a woo part there well I just did that to help it sort of shape more to my back and then I put it back on again by the way all made on my overlocker back on again and then I realized it was still a bit loose sort of at the sides and I wanted it to be a bit more fitted sometimes you want loose tell me how my and I are perfect for that and I put it back on clipped at the sides and can you see there look well, I've just shaped in before it goes back out again. So I just ran it back through my overlock. And when I do that, what I do is start way further up than I want and just track along the exact same stitch that's there and then gradually go in uh, to the width I want and then gradually back out. And the reason for that is then you don't get any nasty step. You don't accidentally have the blade cutting in a bit. So if you've not done that before, have a practice. But it's one of the great things. So this is completely sewn on my overlocker and adjusted straight on my overlocker, just using clips to clip where I want it. And the overlocker can do that for you because you can't tell that the previous uh, seam was there at all. And what I would say about the Naya is if you want to make it in woven because it's such a small amount of fabric it needs grab a scrap grab a bit of a sheet do a test woven to see what you like and then whether you want to size up because it's only two pieces to do that test and you can really decide then whether you know you might decide you want to put in a buster or as i say just size up here but for me i've made one two three four four wovens done each neck slightly differently and I've not had to size up at all so does that mean I probably should size down on the t-shirt version is the question so there we go hopefully that was useful to just talk in a bit more detail about those makes I'm just going to go and grab a little bit of fabric shopping I did and I'll be back right I'm back with fabric so let's start with this one this is the other one I bought from the fabric beehive not bought from them before and customer service very good this I know has been around for over a year now this is this checkerboard double gauze it's just gorgeous I've ummed and ahmed, ummed and ahmed, and I was like nope that's it I can't keep I'll end up having regret the lovely Liz of the baker that sews made a gorgeous summer dress in this that's what mine's destined to be as well so I'm really happy I got myself three meters of that and then fabrics galore have a say had a sale on can I just say their delivery is phenomenal I ordered on Thursday and it was here by Friday <laughs> I just they are they last time I ordered for them as well the speed I don't know if they <laughs> literally deliver themselves to, to the local post office or what I don't know but phenomenal delivery 
if you were ever in a rush or something and they had it, I would say go for fabrics galore. You'll get it way faster than anything else I've ever experienced. And that's not a criticism. Other people are fast, but they are the fastest I've ever dealt with. So they have a sale on where a lot of their fabrics are like four, five or six pounds a metre. Watch out because they sell by the half a metre. But um, I did get some fabric for raffle prize as well as there, but I couldn't help getting myself this gorgeous jersey. It's like brown in the background and then purple. They do another version which is like khaki in the background and blue. And I know that Claire of Loves Red Sews has got the other version of this. I think she got it somewhere else. I was thinking maybe Scirocco, but it's a really nice type of um, jersey and it doesn't go white when you stretch it. Um, and it's it's really soft on the back. It is actually, I think it's it's an O O Tech O O A Tech O O O A Tech. I am so dreadful with words. I'm so sorry. And it's a a stoffer. And if that's any help, I'll show you that bit there. I've seen it in quite a few places. But again, this is like from last year, I think. Can I just say, a lot of fabric shops right now having sales on little legs, five pound meter sale. Becky Sewing Studio five pounds a meter so if you are in the market to start thinking ahead autumn winter or christmas gifts or stocking up it's a good time to do it and then i got myself this one which is a needle cord how gorgeous is that cannot wait to make this for the autumn with all the jewel tones on there i'm thinking quilted jacket trouser pencil skirt how soft is it on the back oh it's nice on the back it's even for a trouser and this one is actually a dashwood studios and it's kaleidoscope by dashwood studios so they still have both these in stock on fabrics galore when i ordered a couple of days ago well i hope you enjoyed that catch up i've now got all out of sync with when i put up my video since i've been poorly but i'm just kind of bring it to you when they're available at the moment if you haven't seen the vlog is out about the bias binding machine and season two of the so what's new in the biscuit tin podcast is now live i will link that in the details and if you become a biscuit tin member there's lots of special things that jess and i have been working on but i'd love to know what you think of season two and i'd also love to know did you make anything for so fruity and also, um, would you like to have a more detailed vlog about my self-drafted skirt? So love to hear that or just what you're up to making. I'll catch you again soon. Bye.